Hi, I'm Richard J. Alexander, and welcome to the first of what's going to be many episodes of Something New on Broadway World, uh, which basically is pretty much professionals interviewing other professionals and having conversations, whether it's actors, directors, producers, people in advertising, all walks of life. I'm thrilled. I'm really, really thrilled to be here today uh, and be the first episode. And the uh, joy of being here is that I get to interview Leah Michelle, who is one of the ensemble and stars of Spring Awakening. And we go way back, and I, we just hugged. We haven't seen each other in a long time, so I'll give you another <laughs> hug. Uh, because um, she did Les Miserables as young Cosette and young Eponine years and years ago. I think it was your first job. It was my first job. I owe everything to you. Oh, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. But um, uh, it, it's extraordinary, uh, and I have so many things to talk about. I'm, I've kept my enthusiasm uh, for the camera because to see this fully grown, beautiful young lady and so talented, so amazingly talented, is extraordinary for me. And, and I have a million questions for you. But first of all, how are you? I'm doing I'm doing great. I'm doing wonderful. Um, our whole evolution of Spring Awakening has been such a long journey for me over the past seven years. Just been dedicating um, my life to it since I was 14. I did the first workshop, and now at 21, almost 21, here we are. You <laughs> That's know. why there's no booze. I know. You can't drink yet. <laughs> we have two shows. Yeah. But you know, uh, it's Sunday are the the Tony Awards, and I'm like, I'm just. I, I have no words. I can't even begin to say how in shock and excited I am. The fact that seven years later for a show that took a long time to get here and, you know, it was it, really hard. We really had no clue what direction the show would take, but just everything has been so wonderful. The community has accepted us and the critics have been so wonderful. And no matter what happens on Sunday, it's just going to be the icing on the cake of this wonderful life with Spring Awakening for me. Well, I should probably say we're at Tony's DiNapoli in the heart of Times Square. There's also <laughs> stars in the alley today. The Tony's are Sunday because yeah, I'm not sure Lauren when this is... Lauren Pritchard and John Gallagher singing today at Stars in the Alley for us. And have you started yeah. rehearsing for the Tony's yet? Are you kidding? They've had us in rehearsal yeah. for weeks already, every day. Um, you know, we're doing a pretty, you know, really cool medley um, for our show, which is going to be awesome. Uh, give everybody a taste of, you know, the show. And we've been rehearsing a lot, and our choreographer, Bill T. Jones, has come in. I love the choreography. Yeah. I love the choreography. I thought he found a whole new vocabulary yeah. for you guys and for the frustration. I thought the choreography was great. It's brilliant. And I have to say, I'm going to catch you off guard here, but everybody's going to want to know this. You know, you were so overlooked on the Tonys. We oh. haven't talked about this. <laughs> And, you know, I'm sure it was disappointing, but I just want to say this. I mean, everybody says, you know, it's nice to be nominated if they don't win or blah, blah, blah. But you really, really were overlooked. I go back to those Julie Andrews words of egregiously, you know, omitted or overlooked. But really, I mean, you're one of the most stunning. I'm not just saying this. I couldn't stop crying and I couldn't <laughs> breathe when I saw Spring Awakening. It was the freshest, freshest thing. But that opening thing, just seeing you there and Mama Who Bore Me, and I just was... I, I couldn't like get a, a hold of myself again. It was such a, an emotional ride. And, and I think, you know, it looks like what happened is somebody got thrown into the wrong category and, and whatever. And there's no point in discussing we, that. But you had to be somewhat disappointed. I, mean, we, we had, uh, you know, we, I don't think you're the type of actress that thought about that. I think you thought about Spring Awakening. Well, I really get that. I see that that's what you've grown into. Yeah. But it's, you know, the thing is, is that we... We had asked to be in for me to be in the featured category. Um, my the the job I do, the work I do every night is pretty much equal to John Gallagher, who was put in the supporting category. Um, but the fact that I was placed in the best actress, you know, to be considered for that was so amazing. Just to even be considered for that was wonderful. And I don't think that you know, like myself and Stephanie Block and Ashley Brown and Christian Chenoweth, I, I don't think we were re overlooked. I just think that there were so many incredible women that... You were overlooked. <laughs> Take it from me. You were overlooked. And I saw everything. There just room this year. I know. Listen, that's really intelligent and very adult of you. I just... <laughs> let's sort of roll back the career. So there was Les Mis, which was your equity card, I think, right? Yes, Les Mis was an open call for me. Um, my, a good friend of mine, uh, her father had gotten ill the night before, and she was a big theater goer um, at age like 
eight, her mother would take her to see tons of shows. And father got ill the night before, and my mother and I ended up taking her. I'd seen my first and only show, Phantom of the Opera, about a week before, and I sang Angel of Music a cappella. I just was like, I'm going to audition too, and, and I went, and I and I got it, and you know, I think you set me up with my first agent, who was Nancy Carson, right. and from then on, I went on to do, I was in Les Mis, and I did the original cast of Ragtime, both in Canada and on Broadway, for a year each, I did the revival of Fiddler on the Roof, right. and uh, I started Spring Awakening in between Ragtime and Fiddler. And but how great that you didn't do a workshop and then get dumped, like you actually saw it through well, to Broadway. Well, they made me fight for it. I mean, I, uh, you know, I had to re-audition every single time for Spring Awakening. Uh, when I did Anne Frank in Washington, D.C. a couple of years ago, you know, I found out I was getting emails like, they're having auditions for Spring Awakening, they're doing a workshop of it at Lincoln Center, and I'm going in for your part, and there I was. And I, yeah. It was so heartbreaking, so I really had to let Michael Mayer know that you know, I still look young. There I was playing Anne Frank, who was 14, and I just finished doing, you know, uh, a young character as well. In it's Fisher. hard to believe this, hearing it and looking at her and seeing how <laughs> young and gorgeous she is. It's hard to hear these stories, but this is, this is a le lesson for everybody in the business. I love Michael Mayer. We sort of know each other, not too much, but after I saw Home at the End of the World, yeah. have you seen that film? Oh, my gosh, of course. That was another experience. I couldn't breathe, and I didn't see it in the cinema because all they were mm -hmm. talking about was, you know, his penis and whether the scene was still in or not. You know, so that's sort of what got all the press, you know, Colin Farrell. Yeah. When I actually saw it on DVD, I desperately got his email and I wrote him and I, I was just like, I, what happened to this movie? It's so amazing. It's amazing. But he's got such a great career and such varied work and it must have been amazing working with him, right? Michael Mayer, as well as, you know, I have to include Stephen Sater and Duncan Sheik. Stephen Sater, who did the book and lyrics and Ian Duncan Sheik, who did our score for our show. These people have been in my life now. They're my family. And uh, as scary as it may be, Michael Mayer has kind of structured me <laughs> as a person. Um, you know, you could have up worse teachers. Him, you I, could have but, worse teachers. You know, he's just brilliant. He's I agree. brilliant. It's kind of one of those things where he does something. He'll be like, well, why don't we just try this? And then it'll happen. And you'll be like, how did you do do that you know the, the the piece spring awakening as a whole is a really interesting idea to take this you know play from 1890 and make it a rock musical and you know have our scenes be you know Leigh michelle i'm sitting here looking at you i'm just going like this i think you're so great i just can't believe what you've grown into well you know i'm so what are your pa i mean so you went into show business and your parents supported does your dad still have the deli no my mom and dad live Ten blocks away from me. Oh, they moved to Manhattan. <laughs> they moved to Manhattan, and they're so their girl got an apartment. Like, was this yeah. all too much for them to deal with? Or? You know, I, I think that it's really, it's really interesting, and this concept is very hard for people to understand and to explain. But when you're in the middle of it, when you're in this huge hit musical, and when there's considerations for Tony nominations, uh, it all becomes so unreal to look at it, to step outside of it and try and look at it, it's really hard. So to them, you know, they just still see me as still just doing my job and they're in, they're so supportive and they're so wonderful. And you know, they're some of the best parents in, in this business. Yeah, yeah. Um, but some of them are crazy. Like you <laughs> interview the parents, well, you interview the parents when you hire kids. But the, you did, they did allow you to stay in the business. Yeah, I mean, they, a lot of kids that went and played Cosette mm -hmm. or Gavroche, I remember Trevor Nunn saying to me about one particular Gavroche saying, Richard, what do you think will become of him? Will he grow into mm -hmm. an actor? And you've actually done it, and you're a fine singing actress. I mean, that's what I saw on the stage. And uh, I owe that a lot to, you know, the fact that my parents let me, my mother left home, left my father, you know, with our house and our animals, you know, while we went to Canada for a year and did ragtime. Wow. And she always says that, you know, when she found out that, like, I was going to be stuck in this freezing cold place with Audrey McDonald and Maren Maisie, Peter Friedman and Brian Stokes Mitchell, along with the, <laughs> the rest of the incredible cast um, and the insane creative team that was involved with Ragtime, just so brilliant, so talented, that was my, that was my education. And the fact that they were smart enough to say, you know, we need to give her this opportunity, um, uh, Audrey McDonald has taught me so much of what I, I now know, so has Marin and so has Peter. They've each given me something, and that has really helped me get through so much. And 
learn so much and grow so much, and wow. I owe a lot to them in that experience. I noticed, um, I have a playbill here handy, <laughs> only because my niece came to town. She's yeah. been bitten by the theater bug, and so mm -hmm. she saw the show on the weekend, and I read your bio again, and it said, a heart full of love to mom and dad. Which, <laughs> of course, is a, Now, I know you got offered <laughs> Eponine. I know you got offered, and yeah. nobody can understand the decision as much as you and I. Here you are offered Eponine, and Spring Awakening is finally moving to Broadway, or it was going to the Atlantic at that point? Um, I had gotten it right towards the middle end of our run at, well no it was the middle because we didn't know we were going to Broadway yet right and I got Eponine um, I which had on, to be it's a dream it's a dream for anybody that doesn't know to be a Gavroche and grow up and play Marius or be little Cosette or, or yeah. little Eponine and grow to do Eponine and sing the killer song you know in the Tony Award winning role that Francis Ravel did and yeah. you are Epi I mean you'll play it oh, God. so you're not going to outgrow you know, it do you know what I mean my they may have teased you at Spring <laughs> Awakening but you could still play Eponine tomorrow my secret so. is out I put that CD on in my apartment at least once a week and I just stand in my living room and I sing the music by myself to now, my dog. was the dog. decision actually that painful or you knew you had to do Spring Awakening, decision, especially after you fought for it? This decision was so painful and the only person who will know about it truly, how hard it was, was Jonathan Groff because right. he literally held my hand through the entire thing and there were numerous nights of walking home just with me in tears walking home from wow. the atlantic we would walk from 20th street all the way to 50th and just talk about it i knew what my decision was i knew you know the right. minute i got up in Nien, it was like i'm doing this i love it but the minute i found out spring awakening was going to broadway there was no way you know there's no way to grow this baby you know my child spring awakening and not take it to the last you know, I think you'll the do the movie and if they do the movie. Spring Awakening? I'm, I'm having dinner with Cameron <laughs> tomorrow night. Today's Wednesday. Yeah, tomorrow night. And every time we get together, we talk about that movie. The Spring Awakening that, movie. No, not the Spring oh. Awakening movie. Les Mis. Les Mis movie? The musical's never been made still. Let's you know? do it. So, Let's but, do it. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, I really have to say that getting that was such an honor. And uh, I'm so happy to have got to have been with Spring Awakening through all of this. But... I truly keep my fingers crossed and hope to, to do that role at some She'll point. She'll do it. She'll do it. <laughs> I, now, I really you know do. you're talented, right? You really do know <laughs> you're talented. Well, you know, it's kind of hard. It, 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 to be honest with you, you know, you, you never think that, but when you don't get a Tony nomination, you sit around and you're like, oh, my God, like, I must really be awful. Oh, and, and, and it, you know, what if I, I could have worked harder? And maybe if I had done this and maybe if I had done... You really do think that way whether or not people say that... You know, that's the honest to God truth. But, um, but you've been in the business enough to know the lessons. It's so weird you should yeah. be saying this. Last night I watched I'd never seen my life with Judy Garland, uh, mm -hmm. Me and My Shadows. Wait, uh, who played it? Was that uh, what's It was her, what's uh, her name? Tammy Blanchard. Oh, right? I'm thinking of something else. And, then, uh, and it was also Judy Davis that's played it, the Judy older Davis, one. Yeah. Right. Okay. But the young one, you know, when you're, you know, you're too fat, you're this, you're that, you're not good enough. You know, she never felt pretty. The, you know, you see the patterns in the life. Now, back then, when nobody knew show business, people are attracted now because they think it's glamorous or whatever. I mean, look at Lindsay Lohan. Isn't that glamorous? Uh, but, you know, there's a double thing. But you grew up sort of, like I said, healthy, you know, with the parents and the business, and you are in the theater. You're not yeah. really in the film business so yeah. much yet, you know. Uh, I want to ask you a question because my niece said something very interesting to me. Um, uh, and she saw it, and she goes, Uncle Dick. She calls me Uncle Dick. Oh, wonderful. And she goes, is it weird? <laughs> she goes having worked with somebody when they're so young and then all of a sudden there you are looking at them you know bare breasted and blah 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 did you feel weird and i didn't feel weird at all because it comes with the territory mm -hmm. of acting and stuff like that um just t t tell us uh, like what is that day so you're rehearsing you're rehearsing obviously you have your sweatpants on and t-shirts for days and days and michael mayer says today you're going to unbutton your blouse like what goes go through way. your mind it, oh, it, it tell us it didn't, because it didn't i think everybody that thinks way. We, we um, were rehearsing for the Atlantic Theater at Baruch College in our rehearsal hall, and the hayloft scene, which is the, the love scene between myself and Jonathan Groff, um, was just kissing, and it was, you know, structured. It was basically the same thing that I had done since I was 14 with the original Malkyar Gavin Creel, you know, which was a simulated sex with kissing and some touching, and, um, but that I was used to. We opened at the Atlantic and we got our wonderful reviews and everything was fine and I literally found a note on my desk one day, just a small note card, a Michael Mayer note card, um, saying we should see Leah's breast. And he passed me by, he goes, I go, I got your note and he said, 
<laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you are you okay with that? Are you you're okay with it? So we'll do that tonight. Okay. And that was it. Wow. And, and that's but that's how Michael does things because Michael Mayer, I love you. I loved you before, <laughs> but I love you even more now. But you know, that's how it was done. It was kind of just like I didn't really have a minute to think about it wow. because the truth is is that it's really not that big of a deal. I think if it had been that whole like, okay, will you be ready on Thursday to unbutton? Like, you right. know, It'd be it extreme. was just like this but is what about for be. Jonathan? I mean, he's on the partner side. Did he know it was going to happen, or did he get caught off guard? Or? Um, I think I said to him, I was like, this is what Michael wants. He was like, are you comfortable with it? And I said, I, oh, I truly sweet. trust Michael. I I trust Michael. To, he's, he knows what he's doing. Mm. And if anything were inappropriate, he'll notice it immediately. He'll try it. You know, I think with Spring Awakening, there were a lot of even more raunchy things that we tried. And we looked at them and we say, that's not appropriate, that's not no. right, and we cut it. So I did it, and it was fine, it was beautiful, and I trust Jonathan, and every night he's the only person I see, and I don't think about it. I've done right. it with my parents in the audience, and it's been a little uncomfortable. I have to definitely say I was more uncomfortable doing it off-Broadway than I was on Broadway, because the house was so it's small, distance, and you could yeah. see yeah, everybody. Yeah, I understand that. Now, in the big house, it's different, but, um, you know, it's, it's not gratuitous at all. It's beautiful and Michael is wonderful and Jonathan Groff is like my best friend in the entire world. Now the company and, seems, it really, really does seem like an ensemble. You know, I went yeah. to school with Chris Esterbrook. I think oh, I told you that in my notes. She directed me in a play actually, if I remember. But, um, and she and Steven Spinella are yeah, so great and all brilliant. the adult roles. But you really do all seem like a real, real ensemble. Yeah. Nobody's left the cast yet, right? No from the original? The, well, is there I any? Mean, off Broadway is different than Broadway. Right. But since the original on Broadway, we've had. You is know, there any everyone. sense of when somebody might be leaving? Or? I don't want to think about it. I'm not letting anybody leave the show. <laughs> right. I mean, Jonathan and I, you know, we, we're in it. And I think Gallagher too, unless he becomes famous and gets a big movie con uh, movie contract or something. But because clearly there'll be other companies and a tour and maybe yeah. the whole. I know Spelling Bee. I just got back from L.A. L.A. They and they have the original cast there. of Spelling yeah. Bee, so maybe they'll do something like that because it would be amazing for Los Angeles to I, see you all. I can't go anywhere without Jonathan. I, I can't do the show without him. Yeah. At now, all. have you been on with his understudy by any chance? Nope, Jonathan. Groff and Jonathan Gallagher have never missed a performance. Wow. Just talk so. to me. Uh, uh, the other thing that really interests me in your growth and, and probably will interest the audience is just talk to me about your singing voice. Uh, what occurred to me is as I watched you, you know, sometimes people sing and the voice sounds very different than the speaking voice. Mm -hmm. You seem to be a perfect mix. You, that you're, your tones just sort of extend. Your voice just comes and it's just like you're continue talking. Are you doing vocal work? Have you trained over the years? And when you're, you know, you obviously get to change from a young girl to sort of an adult young woman, and the voice changes. Not like boys where their balls drop. It <laughs> actually happens between shows, which happened in one Gavroche. Oh, my God. He went out for a meal and went, how do you? And it was like a whole different voice. No. It's not as dramatic with women, but like, what are you doing about your voice? Are you actually training, or is it just natural, and you're just relying um, on the gift? Or like, what's been happening with your voice? You know, I... I take singing lessons with a wonderful, wonderful singing teacher. She is my saving grace. Um, and I'm constantly checking up on my voice and, you know, Dr. Corvin is like my Dr. best Corvin. friend. <laughs> Everybody's I'm friend. there every day like, but am no, I okay? No shots of cortisone though. No, just checking to make sure and, you know, um, this it's is an my, investment. This, this is, is your career. tool. And, you I know, totally get it. I don't think people realize it. It's yeah, eight shows a week. This is my money maker. But from here to here. But, you know, I... I'm a singer, and uh, that's what I started. At, you know, Anne Frank was really the first opportunity for me to just, you know, work on Speak, my acting. Yeah. And I, I would say I want to take more acting lessons and do more acting workshops than my singing. But your acting um, is beautiful. It's very, I mean, you'll be different, you know, different directors bring out different things mm -hmm. and different challenges, but you seem yeah. like so in a good acting place. You know, there's no... There's no veneer on you. There's no layering in your... Just from that very opening moment, again, I just I get chills. Uh, again, my niece went on Sunday, so I was playing the album at home because yeah. I was going to go pick her up. Mm -hmm. And then she's going, but Uncle Dick, what about this? <laughs> and I probably started crying. Aww. Because I think the show is... I think it's perfect. I think it's one of the most amazing, revolutionary simple but so well thought out and well executed pieces I've seen in so long. You're going to win Sunday night. The musical is going to win. Uh, well, Unless I'm out of my mind. You, have to, you know, I was sitting in the audience next to Peter Friedman the year that, you know, uh, Cabaret 
won, you know, Alan Cummings beat Brian Stokes Mitchell and Peter Friedman and Natasha Richardson beat out Marin Maisie and the Those Lion King. Those are performances, King. but we're talking but the about Lion the Lion King beat, beat out Ragtime that year as well. Yeah. And, and I and I have to uh, say, I think that that was one of another just beautiful, wonderful, fine piece yeah. of theater. You're so not wrong. You're not wrong. It, it happens. She's more adult than I am. I, mean, I want Spring Awakening to win. <laughs> I was a huge fan of Sweeney Todd, and they didn't win. You know, the Pajama Game won, and and uh, you know it. It happens. It it happens, and you know, we know in our hearts that, in my opinion, this is the best musical, um, because it's just so, it's so fresh. wonderful. But whatever happens, we know that, and I think a lot of people do too. Just to be honest, um, you know, if, if if the world's not ready for Spring Awakening, you know, hopefully we'll we'll just get to at least stick around. <laughs> it was a thrill to be outside waiting in the rain on Sunday. You know, you do the two and the seven and watch those doors open. Were as you there come at out. night? Did you come at night? No, it was in the it was in the afternoon. I went to pick her up to have afternoon. dinner. We went to see Legally Blonde. In oh, the that evening. was it was lightly raining. I remember coming out and being, but later on right, at night, it right. was Boring. But the doors open outside, so I'm outside the theater and you hear, oh, yeah, you hear all the people. And there's nothing, first of all, they say you're a hit if there's limousines outside. <laughs> and there were plenty of limousines outside on Sunday at 2 o'clock. We've that had night. some incredible people come to see our show. Yeah. Like, ridiculous. But watching the faces come out and hearing the people and seeing the diversity of age from, you know, young teenagers to older people and mm-hmm. everybody's so happy and so yeah. fulfilled and they're on their cell phones you can't believe what I just saw I mean it was really really it's exciting it's very very exciting to know that you know people are getting it and that it's such an astonishing uh, artistic accomplishment but that the, your performances individually and collectively are speaking yeah. you know to the audience this is, um, you know having been involved in it since day one you know I was there when Tom Hulse first joined. Uh, I just want to tell everybody, Tom Hulse, who's one of the producers of this, um, uh, was Mozart in the film of Amadeus. And I don't think a lot of people know that. And he, he's our producer. He's and what a fabulous producer who just truly understands the actor. Oscar and, nominated. Yes. And an artist in his own right. Yeah, and you know, I was involved with you know when he first joined on, and I've seen tons of different actors come in and out, and roles change, but. At this point, it's safe to say that this it's just the best cast. Everyone is so perfect. And it took a long time to find these you know, people, but when they did, it's so wonderful. And our creative team is like, I've never seen a creative team so seamlessly work together. Yeah. Duncan Sheik, Michael Mayer, Steven Sater, Susan Hilferty, Christine Jones, Bill T. Jones, Kevin Adams, um, Christine Jones, like, you know, everybody just it works together just it was great that it was so discovered too i remember when you guys were starting i was rehearsing with amy irving for a play down mm-hmm. because they have that new great base and they have all the great rehearsal uh-huh. space down there uh-huh. at um uh, uh what's the name of the theater the um where it started? Atlantic? At the Atlantic yeah. Theater Company. You know, they have that new building. Uh-huh. And I'd been hearing about Spring Awakening, but I didn't see it till I got back mm-hmm. from the road. And um, it's just, it was so exciting that people went there and discovered it, and that's what made it move. Yeah. And it was just like a little secret. You know, mm-hmm. you guys were all just doing your work. Yeah. And, and that was very, very exciting to I hear mean, about. This rehearsal process was just extraordinary. How Michael would be like, you know... I think that they should do this. And Bill T. Jones would be like, oh, you mean that? And he'd be like, yeah. And like, it just was How did he so... come up with that language? I mean, what well, it, it was it so started, fresh. It started with me, you know, for the mom who bore me for the first song. Right. You know, he would say to me, like, what is the first thing that you do when you look in a mirror? You know, you touch your face and you touch oh, your, you look at your neck and so you look down. And, you know, that he had us. We built it together. For the bitch of living, you know, he would go up to the boys and he'd be like, what does bitch mean to you? Say bitch. Scream at me. And he would. And Bill G. Jones is like the scariest man in the entire world. But I love him. But he's very frightening. Um, I love this. I'm <laughs> loving this whole thing. I'm loving the but whole process. he would scream in their face. He'd scream bitch, bitch, bitch. And he would ask the boys to scream back at them. Like scream. And they were screaming bitch at each other. And the girls are like in the corner of the room. Like what's going on? We were so scared. But... Then all of a sudden, one of the boys just started saying bitch and stomping his foot on the ground. Yeah. And that's how he got wow. Bitch of Living with the stomping of the feet. And so That's why it feels so you know, organic. It doesn't feel like choreography, but no. you're, you realize you're watching a language that's invented. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's just, we all worked together. You know, everybody worked together, the cast and the creative team. And that's how 
a miracle in a sense happens. Wow. You must be you so know? happy. You seem so happy and I in a am. good place. I'm and stuff. really, really, really happy. And I, you live in New York City. I live in New York. And I'm assuming you're and... dating, but I won't get into your <laughs> private life. I, it's not Access Hollywood, I, you know. <laughs> but anyway, we got to wrap it up. Yeah. And uh, and I know they offered you lunch, but you're you don't eat before a show, obviously. Well, did you gonna, have cereal or something this morning? I at least had I don't have to worry about you. And about six cups of coffee to try and get me to wake up. Now, so. my niece asked me, the matinee uh, at 2 gets out at 4.15. What do you do between 4.15 and the 7 o'clock show? Do you have time to go home? I or generally go home, on? but it's so beautiful out right now that lately Jonathan Grove and I, as if we don't spend enough time together, go to the park. We'll go so to, do, you, do you go out and deal with the fans, even if you stay in and take a nap or something and um, sign autographs and stuff? Yeah, I, I generally don't stay in, so I always go outside. Um, but there's so many people. It's it's pretty. It's exciting. It's, and it's a little overwhelming, you know. Um, it's just kind of unbelievable. Jonathan's so good. He he's so wonderful. He takes time and talks to everyone. And I find I get a little bit more uncomfortable than I right. ever thought I would. Right, right. Because you know me. I'm I'm really a. I'm outgoing. I'm shy is definitely not a word. We also have to know. save that energy to focus it. It's a lot of shows, yeah. eight shows a week. I don't think people realize how hard it is. Now, unfortunately, she can't stay and have <laughs> chicken parmesan with me, which I plan on having. But I'm going to ask you one thing. Will you sign this for yes, my niece, Samantha? Course. And I'm just, I'm so happy to see you. We'll have a real proper lunch, but oh. you are the greatest. And give Thank your parents you so my love. And much. I'm very thrilled to have been here and interviewed. Uh, I really may not be here if it, if it weren't for Richard J. Oh, I, mean, it, I don't know I, if that's I, true. Honestly. I think it would have I mean, found your way anyway. But I do remember your your parents not believing that I was interested and said, you know, he this said is going to my mother. You said, you know, when you called me into the room, then I had gotten the part. You said, bring your mom in. And my mom came in and she must have been the shade. She got so red. My mom is like, everything makes her very uncomfortable. And he goes, you said, well, you know, she get a ticket because uh, your daughter's going to be starring on Broadway in two weeks. And I think my mom fainted or something like that. But I think that <laughs> Les Mis as a kid is, is such an amazing yeah. learning experience. Well, it was a first job everyone. and a lot of people paid for college with that. You know, they saved yeah. their money and stuff like that. But I remember I have great affection for your parents and uh, I hope to see them soon and we'll have that lunch. We emailed each other after I saw the show and stuff, but we just haven't gotten together. So yeah. for the first time we're together on camera for Broadway World and here we are. And I love Broadway World. I'm like such a dork. I wake up, get my cup of coffee and I'm like, let's see what's going on in Broadway World. And you're a big star and I'm just so oh, very no. proud of you and well, give Michael Mayer so and Tommy Olsen and, and good luck on Sunday yes, night. Yes, Sunday's going to be so much fun no matter what. We are just, we have our party dresses and we're gonna have a blast. Great. So, thank Thanks you. Thanks, so everybody. Much. Bye bye. Just to wonder this. Watching his world slip through my fist. Playing with her in your fantasies. Haven't you heard?